The old building managed to retain some of its original grandeur, but the modern additions looked like a baseball cap on a statue of a medieval saint. The woman managed to look overworked and hassled, though she didn't appear to be doing anything. The young man's face was full of eagerness and enthusiasm. I figured he was fresh from college. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Is this the Hagenmeyer Clinic? That's correct. I thought I was in a garden center. Oh, the plants. They were my idea. A little greenery to evoke the spirit of nature. How may I help you? I'm here to see Jacques Marquet. Oh, yes. Are you related to our client, sir? No, I'm conducting a private investigation. Then I can't help you. So, do I get to see Marquet before the funeral? That attitude will get you nowhere. My instructions were quite clear. No one gets to see Marquet. So, unless you can prove you're a relative or a close acquaintance, you're wasting your time here. Has Marquet been visited by a man in a clown costume? Oh, no. You haven't seen a man in disguise? Well, there's Theodore the Bear. He comes every Thursday to entertain the children. Personally, I think he scares them half to death in that crummy old bear suit. If I was stuck on my back with tubes in every orifice, he's the last person I'd want to see. Has Marquet had a visit from a pair of gangsters? I should hope not. Can you describe them? A thin guy who looks like a weasel and his friend, the gorilla. Sounds as if they escaped from a zoo. Have you seen this man here at the clinic? No, sir. And I never forget a face. I'd like to shake you by the hand. Don't be fresh, young man. What does this false nose remind you of? Oh, it's a clown's nose. That's right. Why don't you give me a break and go and play with someone else? Can you think of any use for this greasy tissue? I guess you could use it to baste a roast turkey. What does this tool suggest to you? Is it a crack detector? Huh? Polar explorers use them to poke about in the snow. Ah, uh, no. Is this plaster any use to you? I'm allergic to plaster. What does this gem suggest to you? I advise you not to flash that around. The hospital insurance wouldn't cover it if it was stolen. Look at this ID pass. So you're Merlin. Marquet has been asking for you. For me? Yes. He was shouting your name when they brought him in here. Now, let me see. He was on Ward B12, as I recall. Oh, he's being transferred to... Oh dear, he's on Ward J2. That's... Nurse Grendel's ward. What's so bad about Nurse Grendel? She runs that ward like a South American prison. Keeping a well-disciplined ward isn't a crime, is it? Well-disciplined? In the discipline and punishment stakes, she'd whip the butt off the Marquis de Sade. Everything. I mean, everything is done to a strict routine. Six o'clock, alarm call. Six ten, bowel movements, and woe betide anyone who doesn't have a result. Those patients of hers are like Pavlova's dogs. She sounds like a real nightmare. And then some. If Nurse Grendel is that bad, how come the authorities tolerate her? She's like part of the furniture. Oh, you mean she's been here a long time? No. I mean, there's not a man in this clinic who hasn't sprawled out on her. I was beginning to get the picture. This woman was jealous, with a big green capital J. 
How do I find Nurse Grendel's ward? Down the corridor on the left, turn right at the senior consultant's washroom. Right again at the executive coffee lounge. Fair left past the administrator's sauna. And turn left at the end. That's J2. And good luck. Thanks for your help, ma'am. You're welcome. As I turned the corner, I saw the source of the hellish noise which echoed through the corridors. It was an industrial polishing machine with an odd-looking guy in tow. He looked blissfully happy for no apparent reason. Maybe the face of the unaccountably happy domestic had made me unduly suspicious. I mean, I knew it was only my imagination, but the water tasted, well, peculiar. Uh, oui, monsieur. Is this ward J2? It is, but uh, you're not supposed to be here. We have strict rules about visiting hours. Can't you make an exception? I've come all the way from California. You must speak to the doctor. I can't wait that long. What if he snuffs it? You can't talk like that here. This is a hospital. You will have to leave. Do you have a patient named Marquet on this ward? Oh, oui, monsieur. He is in the private room at the end of the ward. He has been placed in strict isolation. You can tell me how my brother is, can't you? Of course, monsieur. Uh, what is his name? Jacques Marquet. Let me see. He's satisfactory. I was told he was dying. Oh, well, he is, but the doctor described his condition as satisfactory. That's quite an improvement on yesterday. Do you know who paid for Marquet's room? No, of course I don't. Preferential treatment like that must cost an arm and a leg. That's not my concern, monsieur. Do you have any clowns on the ward? Why, yes, we do. A professional clown. I'll bet he lightens the place up. Hardly. Monsieur Boissy has been in a coma for the last three months. What's wrong with Boissy? He was involved in a very nasty accident. A silly stunt involving a unicycle. His current condition is due to post-traumatic shock. It's unlikely he'll ever perform as a clown again. It's an ill wind that blows nobody any good. Would you like to shake hands with me? Well... No, it's okay. Forget it. I didn't really want to use it on her anyway. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I don't. Do you recognize this tissue? No, I don't. It looks like a chronic health risk to me. Well, I've been carrying it around for days and I'm okay. My pocket's getting a little soggy. Do you recognize this red nose? Oh, dear. I don't think he'll be needing that again. Who? Monsieur Boissy, the comatose clown. Does this tool mean anything to you? I don't recognize it. Do you know Merlin of Gruber Electronics? No, I don't. Is this plaster any use to you? No, it isn't. Does this gem mean anything to you? It's beautiful, but I've never seen it before. Thank you, nurse. You may come back at visiting time, monsieur. Thanks. Uh, when is that? The second Tuesday of each month. Hello. What's that? I said hello. Oh, hiya. Oh, yeah. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. That's what I thought you said. Don't look so down in the mouth. No matter how bad things seem, I never let life get on top of me. Oh, yeah? What's your secret? Why, it's easy. All you have to do is smile. 
and whistle this little tune. You know what? If you start whistling, I'll bust you in the teeth. It's a deal. Have you seen any unsavory characters lurking about in the quarters? No, sir, I haven't. But I've got nothing to worry about. What's that, Mr. Shiny? You'd take good care of the rascals, I'll bet you would. With a friend like him, I've no fear of oppressors. It must be a great comfort. He is. Would Mr. Shiny be your polishing machine by any chance? Please, don't call him that. He's more of a friend than a machine. I've had Mr. Shiny for three years, and he's never let me down once. How come you got so attached to a polishing machine? I asked you not to call him that. He's got a name, you know. Uh, yeah, Mr. Shiny. It's just that... You think it's odd, don't you? No, I, uh... I don't mind. The rest of the staff think I'm twisted. I heard them snorking behind me back when I gave Mr. Shiny his weekly pull-through. Whatever you've got with this metal muff foot is probably a fine and noble thing. It is. Say, it's not every day I meet someone as crazy as me. Do you know where I'd find a patient called Marquet? No, I'm not allowed on the wards with Mr. Shiny. Would you like to shake my hand? Not until I've washed, if you don't mind, sir. You can pick up all kinds of things in a hospital. Like nurses, right? No, sir. Bugs and germs. And fungal infections. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Who is it? That's what I'm asking you. Have you seen him before? How should I know? You haven't told me who he is. Take a look at the photo. Yeah, okay. Now, have you seen him before? No. What does this tissue suggest to you? You have a cold. What you need is vitamin C and a side order of machine oil. Take a look at this red nose. Are you a policeman? No, this is a clown's nose, not a policeman's. Would this tool be any use to you? No, sir. Mr. Shiny has no user serviceable parts. Whatever that means. Do you recognize this powder? Is that dandruff? No way. It sure looks like dandruff. It's plaster. Ugh. Do you recognize this pass? No, I don't. Should I? No, but I wondered if you'd seen a stranger flashing it about. No, sir. But if I had, Mr. Shiny would take care of him. What do you think of this, Sam? Oh, boy. What is it? A priceless gemstone. Found in a medieval castle in Ireland. Get me into Marquet's ward, and it's yours. I don't wear jewelry. If this gem was yours, you'd be able to buy a hundred Mr. Shinies. Don't be silly. There's only one Mr. Shiny. See you later. Yeah, take care now. As I tugged the plug out of the socket, the polishing machine coughed, spluttered, and died. Mr. Shiny, what's wrong, pal? Dr. Stobart at your service.
The guy seemed to be practicing his air of authority. Today, he was working on his withering stare. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Aha, just the man. You must be the new boy. Uh, yeah, I must be. Well, uh, stop wandering about and make yourself useful. Bunny, uh, come here, boy. This is Benoit, my nephew. Can I trust you to look after him? Do your own babysitting, Gramps. Who do you think you are, anyhow? I am Felix Hagenmeyer. And may I say what an honor it is to meet you in person, sir. You are on my medical wall of fame. Right up there with Pasteur and Leary. I look on it as a privilege, no, an honor, to look after your nephew, sir. He is fresh out of medical school. It will open his eyes to see a real doctor on the job. I'll bet. Show him around. Let him see some real suffering. May I have the honor of shaking you by the hand? You may not. I don't encourage physical contact between my staff. What do you make of this tissue, sir? Interessant. I thought I knew the ins and outs of the human body, but this has me beat. If I were you, I'd have this sample analyzed. Do you recognize this red nose, sir? No, I do not. This is a hospital, not a circus ring. We minister to the sick in body, not the sick in mind. Does this tool mean anything to you? Sacre bleu! That's exactly what I needed in my last operation. It is? I had to improvise with a knitting needle and a couple of corks. If only you had been on hand at the time. My patient would have given his right arm for it. Does this white powder mean anything to you? No, sir. I do not pretend to know the pharmacist's job. Look at this, Doc. It's a genuine medieval-type gemstone. Yes, so I see. Remarkable. So long, Hagenmeyer. Good afternoon, Doctor. Oh, hi. Is this Ward J2? Yes, sir. The patients are ready for your inspection, Doctor. Uh, thank you, Nurse. Well, who's first? Monsieur Croquet in bed two. What's his problem? He's been complaining of loss of consciousness. You'll need this, Doctor. She gave me a long, narrow metal box and a stunning smile. Thanks. Hi, I'm Dr. Stobart. <laughs> Hello, Doctor. The nurse told me you keep losing consciousness. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I've had the problem as long as I can remember. It's a real out-of-body experience. <laughs> like death, but not so conclusive. I see. How long does it last? Just a fraction of a second, <laughs> then I recover. I might not have been a doctor, but I was formulating a diagnosis all the same. This guy was nuts. I know exactly what you mean. It's known in the medical field as blinking. Is it serious? Of course it isn't serious. It's perfectly natural. But just think, two seconds every minute? Why, <laughs> that's almost half an hour every day. Two weeks out of every year spent in total darkness. I don't have time to listen to this baloney. I thought about giving him an electric shock, but I just couldn't do that to a sick guy. Well, goodbye and good luck. Thanks, Doc.
The graph showed a steady decline in his pulse rate and an increase in his blood pressure. It kind of shook me to see this guy's life reduced to a few jagged lines. The poor guy's temperature had been up and down like a white knuckle ride. No wonder he looked so sick. His temperature was normal, with little fluctuation either way. Hello? Anybody home? Who are you? My name is Dr. Stobart, and I'm here to steer you down the rocky road to recovery. Dr. Monroe said there was no cure for what I've got. Your problem is you stayed in bed too long. Are you sure you're a qualified doctor? You better believe it. I thought about giving him an electric shock, but I just couldn't do that to a sick guy. What's your impression of Nurse Grendel? She's a very efficient young woman. Efficient? You make her sound like a vacuum cleaner. I have no complaints. The woman in reception described Nurse Grendel as a monster. Well, that's simply not true. She's quite strict, but that's her job isn't it? You've got to have discipline in a place like this. I'm going to take your blood pressure. Why? I'm a doctor. It's my job. See you later. Doctor! What is it? You haven't taken my blood pressure. Seems fine to me. You're not doing it right. Of course I am. No, you're not. Dr. Monroe never did it like that. I can't take a satisfactory reading while you're excited like this. I'll come back later. Hey, Benoit. There's no need to shout. What do you want? Here, take this pressure gauge. Thank you, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Well, keep it safe until I think of something. Do you know the nurse on Ward J2? No, miss. This is my first day here. I can't wait to get my hands dirty. I was talking about treating my first patient, of course. I didn't mean to get my hands dirty with a nurse. Shut up, Benoit. Okay, sir. Shake my hand, Benoit. I don't think that's a good idea, sir. How come? Dermatitis. Well, I don't have dermatitis. I do. Do you know what this white powder is? No, sir. What does this tissue mean to you? Is that a nasal discharge, sir? No, it's grease paint. Does this false nose mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Do we have to wear them while on duty? No, we don't. Are you ready with that pressure gauge? Primed and ready to pump, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Use it on Nurse Grendel. Huh? Go on, she'll enjoy it. Well, okay. Dr. Stobart? Yeah? I would appreciate it if you saved your jokes for the intern's restroom. This is a hospital ward, not a cabaret. Oh, lighten up. I heard that. Any more nonsense and I shall report you to Dr. Hagenmeyer. Hey, Benoit! Yes, sir? 
Do you still have that gauge I gave you? Ah, yes. What do you want me to do with it? Use it on Eric's sop marsh. Okay. I'm Dr. Stobart. Bonjour, Doctor. Have you heard of a guy called Marquet? He's in quarantine, Doc. Right behind this ear door. Marquet is just the man I wanted to see. I wouldn't go in there if I was you. He has... anthrax. I have to visit my patient. What for? Routine. I have to check he's still breathing. What if he's not? I'll sign the certificate and register his bed as vacant. That's a cold and distant attitude to death. Well, I've been institutionalized to the point of godlike aloofness. The white coat suits you. Thanks. Have you seen any suspicious characters on the ward? Yeah, I have. A gorilla and a weasel? No. This was a tappy old bear. How was the bear acting suspiciously? Well, he was wearing a homburg. Is that against the law? No, but it's pretty weird for a bear. Don't you think it's possible that the bear was a man in disguise? Well, obviously, I'm not completely stupid. But who would go to the bother of disguising himself as a bear? It's not as if he'd blend in with the surroundings. I checked with base to see if any bears had been reported missing from the zoo or a traveling circus. They told me to sit tight until reinforcements arrive. I guess they're right. I'd be stupid to tackle a bear single and dead. Would you like to shake hands? What for? As a gesture of goodwill. On reflection? No. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I have never seen him before. Do you recognize this red nose? Don't get cute with me. What does this tissue suggest to you? It looks as if it has been used to wipe Satan's bottom. I hate to say it, but you could be right. Can you think of any sensible use for this plaster? Sensible? No. Pural? Yes, but you've probably thought of those already. Catch you later, officer. Au revoir, Doc. If you see that bear, kick him in the nuts. Rather you than me, pal. On the top of the chart was his name. Jacques Marquet. I didn't need to be a doctor to read the graphs. Marquet was dying. Another graph, another life. Marquet's slim hold on life was being measured, monitored, and maintained by the machinery on the rack. The machine was far too complex for me to understand. The bottles were full of liquid, with a little trail of bubbles rising to the surface. I figured Marquet's life depended on those bottles, so I decided not to disturb them. Marquet was either peacefully sleeping or placidly dead. Rousing him in the latter case would take a miracle. Marquet? Yes. I am Marquet. I've been expecting you. You have? Well, what are you waiting for? Get it over with. I just want to know what I should do with the gem. The Larmar gem? Yeah, right here in my pocket. Oh, oh. I thought you were... One of the 
Shame. <laughs> Not me. I never inhaled. So, you will send in my place? Uh, yeah. You could hardly make the trip to Ireland in your condition. What should I do with the gem? Deliver it to the Grandmaster. Quickly, tell him that I have found the tripod <laughs> right here in Paris. What, you have it? Not yet, but it's been taken care of. I hired a couple of stooges with a flair for petty crime. Would that be Flap and Guido by any chance? You know them? We've met. What about the Hashashin? Uh, uh, he's more likely to have followed Klausner. He'll stop at nothing to prevent the reforging of the sword. And that's bad, is it? As for Klausner, uh, he has gone off to Syria on a wild goose chase. They have geese in Syria? He, he uh, has a theory about the location of the... Uh, uh, That's enough excitement for one day, Monsieur Marquet. What are you doing here? Talking to this patient, of course. Monsieur Marquet is my patient. Herr Hagenmeier was to hear that. Okay, I'm going. I'd learned all I could from Marquet anyhow. Ah, there you are, sir. I was just coming to look for you. I finished with your pressure gauge. Thanks, Bunny. What's that noise? It sounds as if someone's having a cardiac arrest. It's all right. The doctor's in there with him. Are you sure he was a doctor? Oui, monsieur. He showed me his ID. It was Dr. Brail. There's no Dr. Brail working here. He's an imposter. The door's locked. Help me, officer. Stand back, monsieur. <laughs> <laughs> 